Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the batch file item converter improvements in Reaper. Now the purpose of this video is to show you the improvements added to Reaper 6.5 for the batch file item converter. We're not going to go over everything that Dialog can do, as I've already made that video. And you can check that one out up here. And I'll put a link to it down below. And that video goes over everything the batch file item converter can do. We're just going to focus on the improvements in this video. But let's start with a quick review. To use it, we'll go up here to the file menu and choose the batch file item converter right here. Or we can use the keyboard shortcut. On PC, it's Control Shift F, and on Mac, it's Command Shift F. And if we choose it, it opens up this dialog where we can convert our files either from inside Reaper or even outside Reaper, right from our hard drive. For example, if I open up my hard drive, I have some files over here, some samples. I could drag them in by selecting them all and drag them in to the top and convert them from here. Change our sample rate, the output formats, and so on, and choose where we want to convert them to. I have another folder over here, so I'm going to switch this and choose my directory by clicking Browse, and I'm going to choose this Converted Files folder that I created. Now it's going to output the files right here to this folder. Just choose the output format. Let's choose WAV 24 bit, hit Convert All, and it converts all those files to 24 bit WAV files over here. That's the basic function of the batch file item converter. But let's go through each specific improvement. The first thing on the list Reaper now supports converting multiple files in parallel utilizing multiple CPUs or cores. So, for example, if your computer has four cores, the batch converter will work four times as fast. And Reaper has also improved responsiveness and RAM usage when converting a large file list. And now it's also going to display the number of files and directories in the file list. As we can see right here, as we drag this in, it shows the number of files and directories right here. And it's also going to display a progress bar if conversion takes more than a short time. So if we wanted to convert these files up here, we could hit this button and see what's going on over here, along with the progress bar down here. And now when we add directories to the file list, it's going to prompt to include subdirectories as well. So this folder over here has folders within it with samples within that. So if we drag this folder in, Reaper is going to ask us if we want to scan the subdirectories and bring in the samples from those subdirectories as well. And now all the files within any folder in that directory are brought in to this window. And we could also use any of those source directories or folders to create output directories or folders. So we could check this box right here to use the source file directory structure. We can then convert it and it'll keep the original directory structure intact. Very useful when your original files are organized very neatly in folders. And you want to keep them that way when converting them to a different location. And now there's also the option to overwrite the original files when converting them. I'd personally recommend not using this option as there's no way to undo it. So use this option with caution. Reaper also added the option to suppress notification when finished. If you happen to find this dialog annoying, just turn off notify when finished. And now when we convert our files, we don't see that dialog. 
And Reaper has also added a Save Settings button that'll save our settings in the dialog when we close and reopen it. So for example, if we switch this to MP3 and save the settings and close it and reopen it, it saves the output format as MP3. And we can now save dither and noise shaping settings in our presets. So if we choose dither and noise shaping over here, save the preset, then turn them off and recall that preset and they turn back on. And there's now a new preset menu to clear all converter settings or put them back to the default. So we can go to the presets and choose clear all settings and it puts it back to the default. And there's a new context menu with actions to fit file list columns to screen, open input or output path and display input media properties. So we can right click up here and choose to fit our columns to screen, open our input path, which opens up this folder where our files came from, or the output path where our files are going to. Or we could select the files and right click and show the media source properties for that file. And to avoid confusion, Reaper is now going to delete incomplete output files on user cancel. So if we start converting, we can see the files converting over here, but they're not complete. So if we cancel it, notice the unfinished ones were deleted. And after a canceled conversion, convert and remove buttons offer to affect only converted, not yet converted, or all files. So after a canceled conversion, we can go down here to the convert button and convert just the remaining items or all the items. And if we go to the clear button, we can clear the completed items or all the items. And the default of the output file pattern has been changed to source converted. As we can see right here, the source being the original file name and converted added to the end of it. So if we convert it, we see the original file name followed by converted. But of course we could change this to anything we want. Let's try a few different wildcards like bit depth and sample rate. And now if we convert it, we see the original file name followed by bit depth and sample rate. Next, we have Don't Embed Project Specific Metadata. And this refers to wildcards that depend on the project, like project, author. They'll resolve to blank when using the batch converter, since the batch converter state is independent of the project. Next, we have Preserve Very Long Metadata Correctly. There's really not much to show for this, it's more of a bug fix. Next, we have Support Track, Track Number, an item number wildcards, which will resolve to the project state at the time the media item was added to the list. So for example, if we grabbed all the drum files and added them to the batch file item converter. If we're using the wildcards like track, track number, and we closed the project, all that wildcard information about those files will still be retained. Then we have update sample rate wildcard correctly when changing the sample rate. This is another one of those bug fixes. Then we have allow effects to change processing channel count via pin connected dialog or JSFX channel mapper down mixer. For example, we can now render a stereo file but still have an effects chain that uses more channels. It could be four, six, eight, or as many as we need. And finally, we have fix lost effects tail setting when closing and reopening the dialog. So let's say we have our effects tail setting at a thousand milliseconds and we save our settings and close the window and reopen it. It retains that effects chain tail setting. 
So that's pretty much it. That's the batch file, item converter, improvements, and reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!